Hey guys, it's Alex here at The Health Unit, and I'll be doing a couple video series in terms of how to make foods at home. Uh, I'm thinking of calling it a cut above the roast. Get it? Because I think I'm a cut above the roast? Anyways, if you think it's a terrible name, let me know. I'm happy to change it. You know me, I'm flexible. Today we're making squash soup. It's a classic fall favorite. You only need a couple ingredients, and you don't need that much equipment in the kitchen. Um, so let's just talk about the ingredients. You need squash, clearly, for squash soup. Uh, I'm using a butternut squash. It's really lovely for soups. You can use probably a different squashes if you'd like, like an acorn squash. This one's a nice hearty one that I'll be doing today. Uh, for this soup, you'll need two apples, an onion, um, some broth. I'm using vegetable broth. You can use chicken broth or whatever broth you have at home. And then some thyme and some ground ginger. You can use fresh ginger if you'd like. Uh, but this is what I have on hand. I am actually also not using thyme in mine because I don't like thyme. So you use whatever, like whatever spices you like. Um, but this is the one that this recipe calls for. Do it as you like. This recipe I'm gonna do in two different methods kind of at the same time, so wish me luck. Um, so one method could be on the stove top. And this is how I typically do it at home. And then the other method could be completely done in the microwave. Now, I have not tried this yet. And if you have ever been in class with me, you know that I just sometimes do things that I've never tested before, and sometimes they turn out and sometimes they don't. So I will let you know at the end of this if this really turned out or not in the microwave. I'm sure it will. How could it go wrong? It's just like heating up a bunch of uh, ingredients. Uh, <laughs> let's get started. Uh, I'm gonna start with peeling this, um, the butternut squash. Now, butternut squash is kind of a brutal vegetable to work with because it's so hard. And so what I'm gonna recommend is that you get a fork, one right here, and you just kind of pierce it a couple times, and then you throw in the microwave for three minutes, and that will hopefully soften the outside enough that it'll make it relatively easy for you um, to peel. Now, I've already done this, and it, like half of it got microwaved and half of it didn't, so half of it's relatively easy to peel, and the other half's kind of like, meh. So I'm gonna peel it really quickly. Just grab my peeler here, and um, I'm actually gonna waste over here. Um, so there's a whole bunch of ways that you can cut spaghetti squash, I mean not spaghetti squash, oh my gosh, butternut squash. Um, you can cut it in half and throw it into your oven and uh, cook it for about, I would say about 40 minutes, half hour, 40 minutes. Uh, you could, you could potentially, you could cut it up into little pieces and roast it. And so if you do that, you'd get like more of like a roasted squash soup and you could allow, um, the flesh to caramelize a little bit, so get a little bit darker, and um, that would kind of give it a nice, rich flavor. Totally an option if you wanted to do it that way. The way that I always do it at home, which is like my favorite, is just to put it into the, I just like pierce it with a fork a couple times, and to put the whole thing in the oven, like just the whole thing, for about uh, 40 minutes to an hour, and that way it like comes out, and I let it cool. Sometimes, actually for the most part, I just throw it into the fridge and then deal with it next day. Um, the peel just like falls off. It's all already soft and I don't have to deal with cutting it because I find that like not only is it like a hard vegetable, kind of like a pumpkin, but it also is, um, it's like a sweeter vegetable too. So it sticks to your knife a little bit more when you're cutting it and you're gonna see when I, you guys can laugh at me while I'm cutting it. Um, so that's about good. And we're gonna, so when you're cutting it, um, you're gonna wanna cut it, there's like the neck portion and then like the head portion. So I cut it, cut it, uh, the neck portion off, I guess. That's like a little bit morbid way to think about it. <laughs> Let's do it. And in here, there'll be like seeds, right? So I'm just gonna cut this in half and it's a lot easier to cut and you can see that there's like a bunch of seeds in there. And you're just gonna take that out um, kind of like you would, it's like kind of like pumpkin, like the guts of a, I'm like another like human re um, reference there. The head, the gut, the neck. <laughs> Anyways, I have tried roasting these seeds before. They are, you'll notice that they're not as like flat and they're a little bit like stout. I don't know. I need someone else in this room to like throw ideas off of me. Anyways, um, <laughs> they're just like thicker and so they're not like, they don't roast as nicely, I find. But you totally can. If you really like um, pumpkins, this is totally an option that you can do. And um, actually, also what I'm gonna do right now is because it, my pan takes a little bit longer to heat up, I'm just gonna turn it on 
and I'm gonna put a little bit of um, a little bit of oil on the bottom of it just so it kind of gets going. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put uh, onions in there and I'm gonna soften them. Um, and so that, and I don't want them to caramelize. I don't want them to cook. Um, they don't want them to get too hot. So I don't want them to be like fried. I want them to soften in the oil. And with my microwave method, I'm gonna do the same thing. So I have a microwave safe bowl over here that I'll be using for my microwave recipe. And so I'm gonna do the exact same kind of steps, but do ha like some of it in the microwave and then one part in the, in the, on the stove. Um, so for this one as well, you'd be putting a little bit of oil into it or butter or margarine, whatever you have at home, about like a tablespoon. And I'm just gonna put it at the bottom and I'm gonna put the onions in there. I'm actually gonna maybe leave the squash for a second and I'm gonna cut up my onion and then while my onion's softening in the stove, I can then cut the squash because that'll take about two to three minutes for it to heat and that'll take about the same amount of time to cook my squash. So I'm just gonna set this aside and take out my onion. Now for your onion, Everyone hates cutting onions, but they're not that hard once you know how to do them. So you have your, your stem and your root portion of your onion, and you just want to cut it straight through that. Now again, using your, your index finger and your thumb on the knife, and you're using your claw. You don't cut those precious fingers of yours. And then cutting off the stem portion. Just throw that there. And then you're going to leave the root portion intact um, and just peel off the outer layers. Sometimes easier than uh, said than done. There you go. And that way you'll have something to hold on to, kind of when you're mincing, you're cutting it up. Now, as much as possible, try and get the pieces to be about a uniform size, um, because you're. We're gonna puree this recipe, and you don't have to. You can just use like a potato masher, or just like have like a chunky stew, but you want them all to cook uniformly. So at the same kind of, um, you know, the same time. So um, I'm just gonna cut it across and then um, back the other way. And that's gonna kind of get me some nice pieces and I'm just gonna kind of throw them into my stove, into my pot, sorry. Um, and then that, will uh, start cooking up. And across, beautiful. This has got, this is the easiest way to cut onions. And I cut onions like every day at my house. So once you get it, the knack of it, it really goes quickly. Now I already have, so this is my microwave safe bowl. You're gonna cover it up. Uh, I'm just gonna use some saran wrap and put some holes in it with a fork. Um, so let kind of it steam in there because you don't, uh, that's going to help cook it. So I already cut up my onion actually for this and I'm just going to throw it in here and I'm going to uh, mix it up. Let me just grab a spoon of some sort. Uh, there we go. And I'm just going to mix this up. There we go. And I'm going to put a saran wrap on it. Right. There's a bunch of stuff that's out of my uh, visual for the camera. That's not supposed to happen. There we go. And I'm just going to cover it up nice and tight and um, pierce some holes in it. And I'm going to put it in for about two to three minutes until it's softened. Every, every microwave is different. And as you can hear, can you hear that? It's starting to sizzle a little bit in there, so I gotta mix these up and then make sure you don't let it brown. Okay, I'm gonna put these in the microwave. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back, and so now we're gonna cut up the squash. I'm gonna start off with the head portion, I guess. Um, this one is a little bit easier to cut through because it's not solid like the other part. Um, so I'm just gonna try to cut it up into somewhat uniform pieces. Like I said, if you're not gonna puree this, well, if you're not gonna puree this, you're gonna want them to be about the same size in terms of mouthfeel. But uh, if you do puree it, you want this also to cook at the same time, right? You don't want to be pureeing it and have some parts that are still hard because you're gonna get like a uneven puree. So, cut these up. I'm just gonna throw them, I don't really have a bowl here for this. Nah, this is too small, but we'll start with that. And I'm gonna cut up the other portion. I'm just gonna cut off the ends. I find them to be a little bit easier to cut together. 
and then across the sides. Like I said, it's like a sticky um, vegetable. This is why I like do it in the oven because it's just like, it can be really hard, especially if you don't have the sharpest knife as well. If you don't have a sharp knife at home, be careful. Sharp knives or um, dull knives are actually one of the leading causes of like you cutting your finger because you just push too hard and then you cut, you your, it slides off the food because it didn't cut off, it doesn't cut through the food and then you just like end up chopping like the end of your finger. I have not done that. I did, it, I did it once with a mandolin, but that's a mandolin. Those are like, those are on their own in terms of danger. Them and graters. Okay, so in terms of for the neck portion, I just cut off the stem. I'm gonna cut it in the middle. With, with round vegetables, what you wanna do, your goal is always to get it so that it's flat. I'm just gonna cut it again though, this way. And then, oh, now it's nice and flat. And uh, hopefully you're struggling with this as much as I am. <laughs> this, uh, if you have kiddos at home, is not a step to be including them in. Uh, I'm just gonna set those off to the side because my bowl's pretty full. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna then, once these are kind of softened, and I might try to get a video angle of what this kind of looks like, we're gonna, um, you were gonna throw in the squash and, um, the broth into the pot. Now, this is where it differs with the microwave recipe. The microwave recipe, actually, you soften the onions. Oh, and then you, um, there's my microwave. But then um, you just put the squash in without the broth, and you add the broth at the very end. I'm also, I'm, I keep forgetting with this recipe, because I usually don't add apples to my recipe at home. I actually, I had sausage. It's like fantastic. Uh, <laughs> so there's like lots of variations with this as well. Um, but yeah, I have my apples here. Now this is beautiful. I think these are nice. You don't want them to get too, um, you don't want them to caramelize. So you just want them to be a little bit lighter. I know my microwave is telling me that I'm done. And I'm just gonna add the vegetable stock to this. And then on top of that, I'm gonna add Beautiful. And then I'm gonna add my squash to this. And this, and then I'm gonna add my apples as well. Oof, what's the best way to do this? Without losing your squash everywhere. This way. Perfect, so I'm just gonna mix this up. And that is gonna take about 20 minutes to kind of um, heat up. Um, and this is also a good time to kind of add your apples as well. So I'm just going to peel these really quickly. I got Paula Reds for this. Now that I say that, I actually don't know if these are like the best for cooking. They seem fine. The like, there's only really certain like apples that you are not great for cooking. So like Red Delicious is one of those apples that are just not. They uh, they're just they're really only meant to eat raw. Things like you can do like uh, Granny Smith apples. That'd be a little bit tart in this recipe, but you totally could. I'm like, you, you'd want to eat like a relatively mild apple. Like I'm thinking like a Gala would be a good option here. Uh, Macintosh probably would be another good option. So I'm just gonna, you could leave the peel on. Here's the thing with the peel. It doesn't, like you, you, you'll definitely, like texturally, that's the issue, is that you'll definitely, um, feel it in like, or like, like have the mouthfeel of it in the soup. So there's that. When you puree it, there's gonna be like, it doesn't puree, puree well. So you're gonna have like chunks of it, kind of chunks of skin in your pureed soup. If you're doing just like a stew version of this, like it's not as big of a deal. But um, this microwave's like all over me about opening it. Um, has anyone? I totally do this at home all the time now. I like leave my coffee in the microwave forever. Only to find it the next morning when I go to heat up my coffee the next day. <laughs> Welcome to a house with two kids. Okay. Um, so I'm just gonna quickly chop these up. It's actually a great season for apples right now. Um, apple crumble, apple sauce, lovely things that you can make with it. 
perfect. So just chop this up quickly. I'm gonna put then a lid on the soup and we're gonna move on with the microwave portion of, um, of this recipe. Perfect. Mm, wrong drawer. Okay guys, I am back now with uh, my microwaved onions and they actually looking pretty much exactly like my stovetop onions. So these are like step one, we are on track. So the next step is then to be adding just the squash and the apples. Do not add the broth at this time. You add the broth at the very end and then you kind of cook through at the very end. So I'm just gonna grab, um, because I didn't want to cut another squash on uh, camera. I cut this already. So this is another entire squash. Just throw that in there. And I'm gonna throw in an apple. And to be honest with you, can I also say something? I missed a step. I wasn't following the recipe super closely and I know some, I can hear voices saying, why did you give us recipes and you don't even follow them? Anyways, I totally forgot to add the ginger in the onions. So if you are planning on adding ginger, add them with the onions. If you don't, and if you forget, just like I did, don't worry about it. We can add them right now and they will heat up uh, nicely. It's just always nice to spice up the onions with the ginger, but like I said, no harm, no foul. Let's add this right now to uh, this portion. And I know we're sh we should be um, uh, measuring this out, but you know me and measurements. I only take them really for baking. Okay, so now this is um, in here. I'm just gonna grab my saran wrap again. And uh, I'm gonna throw this on top. Another sheet of saran wrap. I, I don't, I guess you could try reusing your saran wrap, but really just use another one. Uh, and this is the last kind of time that you'll need to wrap it. And you'll need a fork. So this one's calling for about eight to 10 minutes in the microwave. So it's a little bit of a faster recipe if you do it in the microwave. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna throw these in and I'm gonna come back when both the microwave version and the stovetop version are done. And then we can talk about pureeing it using a blender or hand blender or potato masher or whatever you have at home. So I'll see you in a bit. Okay, bye. Hey guys, we're back and both the recipes are now uh, finished. I'm actually really shocked by this microwave one. I might be converted. So much easier. Well, not so much easier, but it is easier. It's faster and it like, cooks beautifully. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do two different methods of pureeing it. I'm gonna use a blender for um, this one that I've done in the microwave, and then I'm gonna do a immersion blender or a hand blender for the one on the stove top. Now you can always use, use a potato masher and just mash it up into like a thick stew if you'd like that as well. It's up to you. Um, so let's start with the blender. So um, when you're blending um, soups that are hot, you need to make sure that you only fill it up halfway. And if you can see here on the lid, there's a plastic piece in it. This piece, if I can figure it out, needs to come off. If you leave this on, what's gonna happen is the steam is gonna make the, basically, like this whole thing explode in your kitchen, right? It just like pushes off the lid and it, and it gets soup everywhere. So um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill it up about halfway and then uh, put the lid on. And then I usually put a tea towel on top to let the steam out, but if there's any splatter, it doesn't kind of get up on my face. Uh, and I apologize, I can't move it closer to me because of the extension cord. So um, I'm gonna grab a spoon and just dish this in. And at this point with the microwave recipe, you're gonna put the broth in it, okay? So this is the step that you do that. And can I just apologize also quickly? I also forgot to add the time or mention that you add time because I'm not adding time because I don't like time. But when you start, uh, when you're allowing the, in the stove top or even I guess, I guess in the microwave version too, you'd add it kind of when you add the squash to like let it simmer with the recipe. So you add the ginger, which is about one teaspoon, in with the onions when you're sauteing those. And then you add a half, about a half a teaspoon of uh, thyme in when you start uh, boiling your vegetables. So let's take this off. It smells like so good. Like, I wish you guys could smell this. Anyways, um, it smells like, um, maybe not like a classic squash. It smells like a, like a slow cooked like carrots, like that really sweet smell. Mmm. A little brown sugar on that, okay. 
focus. And then we're going to add in some broth. And now you can add, I'd probably put in, that's about half. Lid on. Oh my. Tea towel stuck. Put a tea towel on and blend. Beautiful. Look at that. Look at the color and the texture. Come on. Okay, let me just grab a bowl quickly. Okay. Like seriously though, like can you not, like look at that. Oh yes, that's a beautiful puree soup. That's like a big bowl too. I'm not eating that much. That's like a, not a great portion size. Okay. So that is in the, I'm, I'm going to leave it at that, but that's how you do it in the blender. And then for um, your hand blender here or your stick blender, immersion blender, whatever you call it, you just kind of, um, you're just going to kind of pulse it and go through and just puree it. I'm going to put this into the bowl here. This one you can see significantly more liquidy, still gorgeous color. Um, because of the amount of broth I added. So, um, for this one, I clearly, like, it was boiled in there. And so you, it's a little bit harder to figure out what kind of texture you're going to get at the end when you puree it all. Versus this one, I just added a little bit less, I guess, liquid, and you're getting a little bit more of a thicker soup. Whatever you guys like. Um, now season with salt and pepper, and that's it. You got dinner. Wonderful. Lovely. Uh, soup. Um, any some other suggestions is that you, if you have little ones, like six to like nine month one little ones at home, you can use this the squash. Especially if you do it in the microwave version, uh, you just take out a couple pieces and mash it up, or give them as finger food. Ah, I have a ten month ten month old at home, and this is like the perfect little pieces to give to him for like um, dinner because I don't necessarily want to be giving him soup. I can spoon feed it to him, but he always likes to feed himself. So. Having these like small pieces from uh, the microwave version is just like a perfect food for them to eat. So uh, lovely, lovely for them to have. And then also um, you can give some of the puree as well. Um, and then feel free to like mix it up. Sometimes I add coconut milk to this soup. Uh, like I said, I add sausage sometimes. It's like a very versatile soup. It's a beautiful, lovely, rich flavor. And I really hope you enjoy it and have a great time making it. Uh, I kind of say that I've had lots of fun filming this for you guys, but I miss you guys and I miss having you guys in the kitchen and cooking all together. So just stay safe, stay healthy, and I'm hoping to see you guys here soon. But until then, you'll see me here on film yeah, entertaining you, hopefully just a little bit. Anyways, have a great day and happy cooking.